everyone, and welcome back here to Gatekeeper Media as we continue to bring you coverage of the 2022 Portland Open. After a couple days out at Blue Lake, we have now pivoted over to the new 18-hole layout at Glendevere, a complete new redesign to finish things off. And once again, we thank you all for tuning in, and we'd like to give a special shout out to our Patreon supporters who help make this all possible. Once again, I am Dustin Murray, handling the commentary here for the Portland Open, and really looking forward to get to the back nine here of moving day after getting to watch these players attack the front half of the course. Paul Macbeth lighting things up, five under par and keeping a clean card along the way. Put himself in the top five. James Proctor just outside of that. Playing the course blind, by the way. I want to remind you of that. Didn't get a chance to practice uh, due to his full-time job coming into this event, but still competing very well, as you can see, tied in sixth place with Luke Sampson and Adam Hammes. And our other players are also still very much in the mix as we head over to hole 10, a 710 foot par four. The Mando forced you to go through one of two gaps on the front side of the tee. There is an OB deep of the pin as well as an OB green that guards the front side of the putting green. It's very tight up there on the hill. So we're gonna have to stay left of this Mando off the tee again. One of those two big gaps you see. Cole taking the left gap with the big turnover. And that will do just fine. Right there, center of the fairway. See which gap Paul McBeth elects to go for. He'll take the right side gap. Great hyzer shot there. Gets well on up the fairway. He'll be happy with that. Again, just kind of pick your path, right or left. Proctor taking that same hyzer line through the right-hand side and gets a good move on that. Another great shot there. And again, if you haven't caught the front nine, definitely go do so. But again, this is a brand new redesign out at Glendevere. None of the same property even really being used from the last time you saw this property used. So Dustin Keegan having a little bit more time to work on this design. Was kind of rushed to get one out there last time around due to restrictions and timetables. But again, a lot of these holes, you wouldn't even really know you were on a golf course the way it's structured. And now it's just all about this tricky approach. Again, an OB green on the front side of the mound, or OB bunker rather. And then again, OB deep of the pin, very near circle one. And that is a perfect placement shot from Macbeth. Getting over that OB green, you see the flag guy on. There are some bunkers right next to that OB green, so either way, hazard and OB green. Just got to make sure you get over those. As Cole bounces off of that green, but gets himself in bounds. Tricky putt, though, perhaps. Big shot coming in here. And that could be that deep OB, yes. So it makes this hole so tricky. You have to really make sure you get that distance right on the approach to get over the OB and bunkers, but away from that deep OB on the backside. Forehand here from Proctor. Skips right on the front side, but now it rolls. Oh. Very unfortunate. Again, that is the trick with this hole with so much as far as OB and obstacles and then you also have a mound you have to make sure that you can kind of lay flat on yeah. Proctor able to at least save par again have to applaud how well he's been playing considering this is his first time seeing the course is on the day of the round here is Max that putt will come up just low Macbeth for birdie. And he'll find it. As you'll notice, a very wet day. Had rain on and off on day two out at Blue Lake. And it's pretty consistent light rain here at Glendevere. As Cole will tap in his par. And we'll start moving on here to hole number 11. And this is, a, this is a big one, almost 1,200 feet. It's a par five. 
There's several different gaps you can choose from off the tee and a big downhill approach all the way to this nice grove of trees that guard the green. So really it's just about covering the distance and again, challenging this very well guarded green. And again, plenty of gaps to choose from. Unfortunately, Paul going to get caught up there. There is one Mando right off the tee that you do have to play left of as well. So you can't play the big wide hyzer out to the right open fairway. Big turnover there from Cole. He's going to get out into the open. So first step accomplished. over here as well from Proctor. They'll get way on down there as well. As it is also worth noting, there is a second Mando about 525 feet down the fairway that you also need to stay left of. Again, have to stay away from this open kind of golf fairway way on the right-hand side. But still a pretty wide fairway all in all. Shouldn't really come into play that second Mando. But they want to mention at least. Try to give you all the info I've got as we get up to Macbeth here. Again, still a lot of ground to cover after getting caught up off the tee. Didn't like his footing on that one, so didn't maybe get as much of a move on it as he wanted to, but stays clean. Big shot here from Max past that second Mando I was referring to and gets way on up there. Very nice shot there from Max. Forget Nick is again out from Sweden. He didn't catch the info on the front nine. This is his first time playing a disc golf pro tour stateside after, of course, playing a lot of disc golf out in Sweden. There's Cole playing to the left of that second Mando as well. Way left of it, getting way down there. It's out to that left-hand side of the fairway. Right near one of the catch cams. He's actually almost pin high wide left. Some big shots on this hole. We are going to see Proctor also lace this right-hand side of the fairway. Getting way on down there. What a fantastic shot from Proctor. Making lots of progress there. Here's Macbeth trying to still see if he can work some magic, but as you can see, some tricky gats right in front of him. Able to hit that one just to his right, and he's attacking that green. And that thing is getting way down there. Into circle two. What a shot from Paul. Didn't have the best tee shot, obviously, and even his second shot was not what he wanted, but he's making something of it. Max has just been surgical on this hole, though. From tee shot to approach to the green, he is an easy birdie in front of him. Speaking of precision, Proctor matches, almost hits the koozie on his approach. And Cole has a just a putt approach to get up there for birdie. Holy cow. Looks like we got a lot of birdies on the horizon here on hole 11. Oh, just high from Paul. He'll have to settle for par, but he'll keep the car clean. This call takes the birdie. Max will connect as well. In here for Proctor for his two or three rather four I'll get it right eventually folks it's a late night for me right now trying to get this one out to you but it is a birdie nonetheless for Proctor you get what I mean is
We'll see Paul tap in the par. We get the whole 12, a 370-foot par 3. There is a Mando about halfway up the fairway that you do need to stay left of. It's pretty much a dead straight shot with just a low ceiling that you have to challenge. And, of course, it is playing slightly downhill as well. Rain's picked up a bit as well, too. Well, it's been consistently wet today. Now the pour is a little bit heavier, and so making things even trickier. Well, that was loud. Luckily, not really detracting from Proctor's throw too much there, but that was kind of unfortunate. So Max is going to turn that one over too much. And that's actually going to be OB? That's what the indicator said. Hmm. Didn't think there was really any OB over there. We're going to see Paul get up there to the green. Oh, we missed the Mando. That's what it was. So try to get up and down there and at least get bogey. Paul coming up short there off the tee. Just has to pitch up for par. Ooh, Proctor almost given that one a go. Almost found the chains for birdie. We'll have to settle for par in his own right. And yeah, you can see it is tough conditions out here for our players, but Cole navigates it. It's a couple of birdies here in a row early on here in his back nine. We'll see some cleanups here. Getting the bogey. Proctor here for par, and we'll be back after a short break. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way I'm coming back home. Long dirt road all on my own. Unbelievable stuff from Paul McBeth. Now we get to hole 13, a 455 foot par three. Slightly uphill, but a pretty just open distance shot, though the green a little bit guarded by some trees. But this is one of the more open shots where you don't really have any OB or Mandos to worry about. You can kind of just unleash one off the tee. Just got to get that distance to get up there to the basket. As Cole says, a little wide on that one. So has plenty of distance, but just wide of the green. You see Proctor kind of just going straight at it. This looks beautiful as long as he can get through these trees. Oh, wow, what a shot. Just parts the pole right on the wood chips. What a strike down the fairway from Proctor. Doesn't really get any better than that unless you ace it. This is looking pretty good from Macbeth as long as it gets some good ground action. Though, of course, with the wet grass, you never really know. And it looks like he hit him. Pretty big stick there, but still bounces into the circle. Max playing more of the turnover, but it's getting out in time. And that jumps into circle one as well, so majority of the card find themselves with the circle one putt. Again, Cole just a bit wide, but has a look at it. Ah, it just comes up a bit short. We'll have to settle for par on this one. Here's Macbeth for birdie. And just a little low. He's had so many chances here. He's under a couple, but again, he's still putting together a pretty solid round all in all. So all of his mistakes have really come for birdie, not really 
to save par or anything like that. You can wonder how much of it's the conditions, how much of it's his putting form kind of changing from what I'm used to seeing from him. Uh, you know, we kind of noticed that throughout the tournament. Either way, we see Colt tapping in his par. Max finds his birdie after a great shot. And, I mean, again, Proctor just can't stress enough how picture-perfect his tee shot was. As we move over to hole 14, an 845-foot par 4, there is a Mando off the tee that just kind of forces a big Anheuser or a big forehand placement shot to the center of the fairway, and then more than likely another big backhand to the green. There is some OB that kind of surrounds the putting green as well that players will have to worry about. Comes up pretty close on circle one as well. And so that's that big Anheuser backhand I was referring to through the gap just left of the Mando. And that'll do just fine. Right in the center of the fairway. Again, the fairway is pretty open. The OB right doesn't really come into play unless you just really overturn something or really get too much hyzer on the forehand. Nice, Matt. Another great shot there coming out of Max. Puts himself on the dance floor. Make that final move to the green. We get to Cole here. And he smoked that disc. That thing is going. Holy cow, that is way down there. Makes the catch cam turn around and gets, I don't even know, like 100 or so feet past the catch cam. Wow. Going to make that approach a lot easier. Again, just 17 years old, Cole, but still already featuring big distance. Paul booming one down there as well. Will be first to act here. Again, just a big hyzer shot to the green is what this hole requires. Again, that OB, though, does come in pretty tight in circle one. That will do. Oh, it does come back in. I thought for a moment he had found that OB on the right-hand side of the green, but actually does make it back in play. Great shot again there from Max. And here's Cole, way up there. Just a stock hyzer into the green. It's a little caught up though, and looks like he's just outside the circle, so a bit unfortunate. He'll be first to putt. But he will find it. Let's rewind that one back. That's a big little Anheuser putt around the tree in front of him there. I know he's had a couple of putts miss wide right on the round, but that one will find the chains. That's three for four here. Last four played. We get up to Proctor just on the circle's edge after getting back in bounds. Gets that meter. But it's still going to fall short on the putt, unfortunately. Have to settle for par. Oh. Beth, though, will connect. That'll keep him trending in the right direction. Big birdie as well there for Max. As Proctor comes and taps in the par. You get the hole 15, a 335 foot par three, just a beautiful tunnel shot that's very wooded again, really makes you forget that you're on a golf course. There is a flex forehand line available off the tee that's more towards the left hand side of the fairway that does bring some left side OB into play. That being really the only OB on the hole. And you can see that Max is looking for that flex forehand I was referring to. Gets through the gap just the way he wants. Oh. And that is a beautiful shot again. Max is really connecting here on the back nine. Again, fun to see a newer face on the chase card and see him doing well makes it all the better. 
So it's like Cole's looking to take that same flex forehand line. And it seems to be the most open line to the pin, though, of course, you can go backhand right up the middle. And right, Cole kind of turned that one over a little bit too much. Gets caught up because of it, but still gets up there. And Macbeth's going to go on that backhand. It's going to be probably a hyzer flip right up the middle. Oh, baby, what a shot. I mean, shots like that are why holes like this are so fun to watch played. When you just see that perfect hyzer flip up the middle, there's a few things more elegant in disc golf than watching that kind of flight, and Proctor may do just the same thing. Dress a little right, but still very much looking to attack this for birdie from there. So we get up to Cole. Just a putt approach up there to get his par and well executed. Proctor a little high with that putt. We'll have to settle for par. Max using that flex forehand to perfection to connect three in a row. So a little bit of turkey here to get things going in his back nine. So we get up to Proctor now for par. We'll find the chains. We'll see Macbeth connects yet again. See the rest clean up and we'll be back after a short break. If disc golf is your game, make gotta go, gotta throw your disc golf warehouse. With a huge selection of discs, bags, baskets, carts, shirts, and more. GottaGoGottaThrow.com has all the tools to take your game to the next level. Shop online or a Golden Valley, Minnesota store. Free shipping with all online orders over $75. Online or in-store, get what you need for the game you love. GottaGoGottaThrow.com, your disc golf warehouse. In the game since 1993. Let's get back to it. We're at hole 16 where there are several options off the tee to attack this pin. Again, pretty well guarded green with some trees more on the front right hand side. I'd say the biggest gap is probably the left gap, but it's still kind of a choose your adventure. So you're going to see Max try to force one over on that right side, but gets caught up. And you can see the center gap being the smallest, but again, there's a pretty big gap on the left hand side and also a pretty sizable one that Max is looking to attack as well. That is the gap that Macbeth chooses to go after also. But it's just not really stabling out as much as he wanted to. No OB or Mandos or anything like that to worry about on this hole. So no trouble to get into, but just didn't really get the fade he needed to attack the green. Does Cole actually place the tightest gap, perhaps, off the tee in the center? And comes up just sort of circle one. All right, looking at like a 40 to 50 footer over there. And that's just yanked by Proctor. Caught up very early. So he will be first to act with still lots of ground to cover. Beautiful second shot, though. Looks like he gets him right near Circle's edge. This is Max, who also found himself getting caught up off the tee here, has a long approach ahead of him. Looks like that catches a couple of branches and comes up just short of what he was looking for. We get over to Macbeth here. Just short on the putt. But again, keeping his car clean more than likely. If he can get in that par. Proctor. Jumper for his par. That will come up short. So he'll be taking a four on this one. And here is Cole. Looks like he's just on the button of circle two. But he will knock it down. Cole starting to get hot on the putting green. 
as that is a 49-footer for birdie. Keeping himself up near the top of the leaderboard with that one. So now we get to Max. Still able to save the par, and that's after a turkey, so he is putting together a pretty solid back nine here. We are going to see some tap-ins to finish things off. All for par. We get the hole 17, an 830 foot par four. Just looking to hit a really big tee shot to kind of kick this hole off to set up your approach. Ah, there is a roller option off the tee, but really the meat and potatoes of this hole, I guess you could say, is just really that approach into a very wooded green. And really just kind of the final third of the fairway or final quarter of the fairway, I guess you, I could say, is quite, quite wooded. Big turnover there from Cole. Gets way on down there once more. So it's a big tee shots out of Cole today. It's also worth noting there is a double Mando on this hole, but I would say it doesn't really come into play. It just kind of keeps you away from some golf airways. There are certainly some hazard bunkers, though, that you do have to contend with on this hole. But usually your tee shot's going to come up pretty short of them and not really going to have to worry about them. Bit of a tree kick there for Macbeth, but still should have something to work with from there despite that, from what I could see. like Proctor just either turned it over a bit too much or just didn't get the right height on it. So still has a long shot to approach the screen. Again, you can see just how thick it, it's trying to get in there. Lots of trees guarding. This Macbeth gets a little too high, catches a, a branch that knocks him down short of where he wants to be. Forehand that was starting to look pretty nice, but gets caught up. And again, with so much distance off the tee, Cole has just kind of a short backhand chip shot to get up there. And puts yeah. it right in yeah. position. Another beautifully played hole here from Cole. Another one of those young guns to really keep an eye on. One for the future, but already getting big results. Nice up shot there. Now Paul just looking to get up and down for par. Looks like he's got right there near the circle's edge. Max getting up there as well for his. And yeah, here is Macbeth right on the edge. Just to keep the card clean. And that will drop right near the center. Beautiful putt there from Macbeth again. May have missed on a couple of scores he wanted, but he has kept the card away from any kind of red. As Cole knocks in the birdie. Really getting hot here on the back nine. No, he was, again, a bit disappointed with some of his wide right putts on the front nine, but has kept his composure, and now he's starting to get rewarded. Proctor will find his par as well. And Max will also do well. Now we get to the 1,000 foot par five to end things. As a pretty open fairway, so you can have just like a pretty just big tee shot, but it's really the approach. There's a couple of mandos that you have to stay left of on your way to the pin. 
and it's just a narrow fairway once you get about a little past halfway up the hole, I would say. So of course, Cole, no stranger to big distance this round. Booms another big backhand up there. And that is some OB out to the left, but he stays in bounds. And that's actually a really good position. If you can push over there that left, it really helps you with those two mandos you have to clear on your next shot. And so big left is, is good. That comes up just short of an OB pond, but still off to that left-hand side of the fairway where you want to be. This one turning a touch, but now fighting out. And clears the OB pond and off to that left-hand side of the fairway. So another beautiful place to be. Really well done there from Macbeth. Proctor playing more towards the right-hand side. Does get right up there near just before the OB pond. He and Max will be first to act on this side. You kind of start to see the kind of white stakes that kind of start showing you where the fairway begins to narrow. And again, these trees you see kind of on this right-hand side of the fairway is where those two mandos are at. Just need to stay left of those. That, unfortunately, finding the out-of-bounds, though. Big forehand here from Macbeth. will jump in bounds and in a great position on the fairway. He's going to be very happy with that. And what a beautiful backhand from Cole. He's looking potentially at a long eagle bid here on hole 18. At the very least, an easy upshot for Birdie. So we see Proctor. Very nice shot to get him in the circle. Looking to recover. And here from Max will also get him. Oh, actually skips through the basket and rolls towards the back OB, but does stay in. Whew. That was a roller coaster of emotions on that shot. It's a perfect upshot there. We'll hit the box from Macbeth, giving him a chance to finish things off in style with the birdie. Again, a long eagle pit opportunity for Cole after some big shots and a little short for that, but hey, he's going to get his birdie. And he'll be happy with that. So here's Max. Very long putt ahead of him here. But will connect. What a putt for Max. And honestly, it was a great round to watch, particularly this back nine. Played some great golf. Certainly should be proud of how he's handled his kind of debut on coverage on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. So we get over to Proctor. Looking to say par, I believe. And that just dances out. Here's Cole for a birdie tap in. Ends with the turkey to have a very strong round in his own right here. Eight under par. That is really, really well done. Proctor will finish things off with a bogey. And that'll finish us off here as we see Paul McBeth nine under on the day. That is tied for the hot round of the day, and it was a clean card to get there. And Cole just one stroke behind the hot round, the second best score of the day, keeping himself very much in the mix. And yeah, Paul McBeth jumps to a tie for third. That puts him on lead card. Cole will remain with us on Chase Car tomorrow with Joel Freeman, Adam Hammes, and Gannon Burr joining the fold. Again, we thank you so much for tuning into this coverage. Please be sure to follow and subscribe so you can catch the rest of the Portland Open and the rest of our coverage of the Disc Golf Pro Tour throughout the year, as well as some other events that Gatekeeper will be covering.
and special shout out to my Patreon supporters who help make this all possible. And again, if you enjoyed the commentary and you want to give me some support, give me a follow. You can do so on Twitter and Instagram. It is follow dust, D U S T, and then Dust and Disc on YouTube if you'd like to do that as well. As I put some disc golf content out there. And yeah, again, thanks so much for tuning in and catch you for the final round of the Portland Open coming up real soon. <laughs>